I was so scared to go near this dog because his breath stank. That was just toothpaste, and this is Teddy, and he's a toy poodle, and because of his breed, his breath and teeth are just not in the greatest condition. His breath literally smelled like a can of bounce that ass, and it just was not pleasant. And listen, I'm not coming for Teddy at all, I love him so much, he's an angel. But since his hair is so thin, it was basically transparent, and he consistently drools so his face gets more and more wet, I really did try the best I could. I did a zero on his body and I scissored in his legs. When I'm scissoring, I always make sure to use the curve of my scissors along with the curve of the dog. It's so much easier that way and I also don't really use straights that much, so I'm really not the best with them. I did some finishing touches and then that was Teddy's before. I gave him a little tie with some cherries on it and he's all ready to go home. Bye Teddy! Oh my god, what happened to this dog's face? A stepmother with scissors and cataracts happened. Before I fix up Pebble and her face, I gotta put her in the tub and make sure she's extra clean. I believe it's this puppy's first haircut, and she did so amazing for it. Even though Pebble looks like she just nearly escaped an avalanche, I still think her face turned out super cute and this is how I fixed it up. First, I chunked off all the hair that was sticking out the most. And then once I sketched out my overall shape with my chunkers, I go in with my curved blenders, and I literally blend like there's no tomorrow. This can be a little bit tedious because it does take a long time, but the benefits are that it's super relaxing for the puppy, since it's very slow movements, and of course I'll blend out the harsh lines that were made with kitchen scissors. That was Pebbles before, and then this is her brand new after. We still need some hair to grow in, but I literally love Pebbles so much. Pebble. This is how I blow dry my hairy cheeks. Before I give you people what you really want to see, this is Stitch the Golden Doodle and he's in just for a bath and tidy up. Stitch's hair is literally thicker than Kim K and myself combined, so the entire bath and blow dry process took me a little bit longer than I expected. In order for me to make him the most cute I can, I use a stand dryer, my comb, and brushing spray, so then all his curls are blown out. In a bath and tidy, I'm scissoring around his feet, face, and sanitary areas. As the name suggests, it's literally just supposed to be a tidy up. But I do like to be so extra because that's just how I am and scissor the entire dog's face. I want to make Stitch as perfect as possible because he is a golden child. Get it? Because he's a golden doodle. I'm all done with his tidy up though and I slap on a bunny bandana. Well, I guess I tie on the bandana. And Stitch is clearly ready to be a professional lap dog. Bye, Stitch! Don't ever use human dye on a dog. This is Melly, and she's a golden doodle, and I'm not sure if her parents used human dye or not. I don't think they did, but here are the reasons why you shouldn't. First of all, obviously, it's very toxic for dogs. Also, to mention that it is very bad for their skin and coat. Whether it was pet safe or human dye, we got most of it off of Mel. As you can see, there was like only a few spots that still had dye on her. Today, she was only in for a bath and tidy, so I wasn't running my clipper down her body, and I was just tidying her up a little bit. Whoever groomed her last made her look a little choppy and sad. So I did my best to clean her up without doing too much, where I was basically just hand scissoring the entire body. A lot of people ask me my opinions on golden doodles, and honestly, I'm all for them if they are good for the groom, and they aren't the size of a jeep. But anyways, I'm all done with this sweet baby. This dog always licks my tools, so I decided to show her how it feels. I'm just joking, I didn't lick her face, no offense Olive. I do love you, even though you're named after a food I completely despise. This is the second time I groomed Olive, and she did so good today. It's actually kind of funny because um, her mom told me that she gave Olive a little bit of a... Um, calming treat maybe olive had the munchies and that's why she tries licking everything but look at these cat like reflexes like fast and furious who sign me up to be the main character thank you okay but seriously though how are there like 12 fast and furious movies like do y'all not get bored of cars i i don't understand harry potter is like the only exception to having that many amount of movies olive was a very good girl for her haircut and she has made so much improvement since i groomed her last time there was a lot less licking, so I am very, very thankful for that. I gave her that bow, and she's all ready to go home. Bye, Alex!
This golden doodle puppy has no eyeballs. Just kidding, he does. He was just very fluffy and very matted. This is Toast, and I gave him so many nicknames throughout the groom. My favorite nickname for Toasty over here was Burnt Bread, but he didn't really respond to that, so it kind of didn't help in the slightest. When I called his dad about having to shave Toast, let's just say his dad had a little bit of a mental breakdown. It was nothing serious and he wasn't mad at me, but I could tell he was definitely going to be going through the seven stages of grief. His dad was like, he won't be shaved, right? I'm like, no, he will be shaved, unfortunately. He's like, but not shaved, shaved. I'm like, yeah, shaved, shaved. A five is a shave. And his dad's response was, oh my God. He was really understanding though and hopefully he'll stay on a grooming schedule because Toast was getting groomed every 3 months and that is simply way too long for a golden doodle. Toast was an amazing boy for the groom and hopefully I'll see him again. Today I'm grooming Harley and why is it a struggle every single time to get her off the table? I swear in every video that I do of her she always tries to jump off my table like it's a diving board, but I'm finally shaving all the dye off of her. I think she looks like a completely different dog now without all the dye. She literally looks like a little lamb. She's so cute. Oh, she's a proper lamb. Okay. I would say the hardest part of her groom was scissoring around her ears like I am now. She really is so amazing for everything. It's just this is the first time I've ever shaved her ears short. And so she's new to the whole short around the ears thing. And what would a Harley video be without her chilling on my table like she has no cares in the world? You can't tell me that she doesn't look like a lamb. Like, she literally looks like a lamb. Like, if someone said, oh, this is one really big lamb, I'd be like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. You guys better wait till the end of the video because you'll get to see Harley playing with a cheeseburger toy. And it was, like, the cutest thing I've seen in a long time. Besides myself. <laughs> uh. Harley, why are you always judging me? I'm all done though, and this is her playing with her hairy cheeseburger. Haha, <laughs> bye Harley! We're giving another puppy their first haircut. This is Kona, and she's a Cavapoo, and she does have a little bit of like a double chin going on. Ugh, twinsies Kona. She kind of looked like a dad that was on your butt too much about eating carbs, and so that's why you were 160 pounds in 7th and 8th grade, but in reality, it was because they never bought food, and so you just walked to Taco Bell every day and got a Nacho Bell Grande? Or is it just me? After I drop my comb and Kona realizes how clumsy I am, I'm scissoring up her face in the shape of a circle, obviously. I find that doing puppies' faces before I scissor up their feet or their legs makes it easier for me because by the time I finally get to their face, they've probably already seen like four other dogs come in, throw up on the floor, and probably a power outage. All jokes aside though, Kona was really really good for her haircut, and I did a shorter body and a longer legs, and I think it turned out super adorable. And everyone say it with me. Bye Kona! Oh my gosh, this dog was foaming at her mouth and gagging at the sight of my face. That's so rude, Gigi. Don't worry, y'all, that foam was just toothpaste because Gigi is a toy poodle and they always have, like, the worst dental hygiene. So if you have a dog, make sure to brush their teeth today. People say that small dogs have big personalities, and I don't know if we can call Gigi's attitude a personality because she definitely thinks that since she's carried around in a Louis Vuitton purse, she's somehow better than I am. Which would be correct. I did the typical short but not shaved look on Gigi. And I scissored up her face the way that I normally just do all my faces. Which is basically like a shorter chin and then like a longer circle muzzle. I did my final finishing touches on Gigi and this little teddy bear is all ready to go home. This was Gigi's curly before and then her super fresh after. Bye Gigi! This is what you get when you ask for short legs and a long body. This is Bruno, and his parents didn't ask for that, but don't be fooled because some people do. I forgot my AirPods, so I tried putting on a happy hoodie, and it didn't really fit me. I honestly feel like it gave me some wrinkles, but who knows? Bruno's parents wanted him short today, and yes, unfortunately, I did have to muzzle him for his body. He's so used to having his legs scissored in that he hasn't really had a lot of experience with the clipper running down his legs. I didn't use curves or straights on his face and I just used my chunkers and blenders because if I did use my curves or straights it would leave lines that I didn't want to have. 
And guys, Bruno's ears are literally top notch. I love when dogs have a cute set of ears. Look at those little flappers. And yes, the left ear is longer than the right ear. I tried fixing it the best I could, but it's also the way he holds his ears. I did go short on him today, but I still feel like he turned out super cute. I gave him that Cubs bandana because he's a city boy. Bye, Bruno. No, no.